Ladies and gentlemen, may I please request you all to rise for our esteemed guests. A warm welcome to you all at this 12th Annual Maritime Power Conference 2017, organized by the National Maritime Foundation. The theme of the conference is the Blue Economy, Concept, Constituents, and Developments. Ladies and gentlemen, over the next two days, this conference will provide you insights on Blue Economy. We are honored to have amongst us a number of renowned scholars, experts, and practitioners to share their perspective on the theme of the conference. As we begin the inaugural session, our guest of honor, Honorable Union Minister of State, Independent Charge, Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Sri Rajiv Prataburuji, Chief of the Naval Staff and Chairman Chiefs of Staff Committee, Admiral Sunil Lamba. As you may be aware, our chief guest for the day is Sri Nitin Gadkari, the Honorable Minister of Road Transport and Highways and the Minister of Shipping. However, he is unable to join us in this inaugural session due to some exigencies related to the Parliament. We will therefore have a special session for him at 10 12.38 p.m. It is our pleasure today to introduce to you Admiral R.K. Dhawan, Chairman, National Maritime Foundation. Admiral R.K. Dhawan, PBSM, ABSM, YSM retired, has had an illustrious career in the Indian Navy. He has commanded three frontline warships of the Western Fleet and later commanded the Eastern Fleet. He has been the naval advisor at the Indian High Commission at London and was later the commandant of the National Defence Academy. Later, he served as the deputy chief of naval staff and the vice chief of naval staff before assuming charge as the 22nd chief of the naval staff Indian Navy on 17 April 2014. He retired on 31st May 2016. On 25th November 2016, he took over as the fifth chairman of the National Maritime Foundation. May I invite Admiral R.K. Dhawan to deliver the welcome address? Honorable Minister for Skill Development and Entrepreneurship, Sri Rajiv Pratap Rudi, Chief of the Naval Staff and Chairman of Chiefs of Staff's Committee, Admiral Sunil Lamba, Admiral Ramdas, the former Chief of Naval Staff, Admiral Naya, the Founder Chairman of the National Maritime Foundation, Excellencies, Principal Staff Officers, Senior Officers, Captains of the industry, distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen. It is indeed a distinct honor and a proud privilege for me to call a very warm welcome to the Honorable Minister Sri Rajiv Pratap Rudi and all our distinguished guests for having spared their valuable time to be with us this morning. I would also like to extend a very special welcome to all our distinguished invitees and participants who are present here today for the annual Maritime Power Conference of the National Maritime Foundation. As you're all aware, over the last 12 years, the National Maritime Foundation has provided a common platform for discussion on maritime issues. Last year, the conference was held at Vishakhapatnam, the city of destiny as part of the activities of the International Fleet Review organized by the Indian Navy. And the theme of the conference was partnering together for a secure maritime future. The theme of the conference this year is the blue economy, concept, constituents, and development. <clears throat> Our blue planet, the Earth, has a dominance of the maritime domain with over 70% of the Earth's surface covered by water, nearly 80% of the world's population 
living within 200 nautical miles of the coast and 90% of the world's trade transiting by sea. The oceans and the seas are rich in oil and mineral resources. They are the suppliers of oxygen, absorbers of carbon dioxide, a virtual heat sink, rich in biodiversity, and are emerging as the global economic highway for transit of seaborne prey. The seas and the oceans, therefore, are gaining newfound importance as each day goes by, and there is no doubt that the current century is the century of the seas. With depletion of resources on land, humankind has turned towards the seas for resources. But there is a misperception that the oceans have an unending resource base and are an infinite sink. Nothing could be further from the truth. Consequently, we see pollution of the oceans and contamination of the natural marine habitat, which is having an adverse impact of climate change on the oceans. Studies have indicated that 80% of all pollutants in the oceans emanate from land. And if the current rate of pollution continues, we will have more plastic in the ocean than fish in a few decades from now. Harnessing the ocean-based blue economy therefore calls for optimal utilization of the ocean resources with minimum impact on environment and ensuring sustained development of the oceans. India, ladies and gentlemen, is essentially a maritime nation with a natural outflow towards the seas and the country sits astride busy sea lines of communication that transit across the Indian Ocean. We have a long coastline of 7,516 kilometers, an exclusive economic zone of over 2 million square kilometers, over 1,300 islands and islets forming part of the Andaman and Nicobar group in the Bay of Bengal, the Lakshadweep group in the Arabian Sea, and islands of the west and east coast of India. We have 12 major ports and over 200 minor and intermediate ports. 90% of our trade by volume and 77% by value transits by sea. We have a vibrant shipbuilding industry, a thriving fishing industry. We have assets in oil and gas, offshore assets off the west and east coast of India. And we have deep seabed mining areas in central Indian Ocean. It is evident, therefore, that we have vast maritime interests which have a vital relationship with the nation's economic growth. The Honorable Prime Minister of India, Sri Narendra Modi, has outlined his maritime vision for the Indian Ocean as Sagar, which means the sea and stands for security and growth for all in the region. The Ministry of Shipping has launched the Sagar Mala project, which is a port-led development and modernization project and will look into all aspects of interconnectivity of major and minor ports and hinterland. There has been a focus on coastal shipping, focus on cruise and marine tourism, development of infrastructure in our islands. The Ministry of Skill Development is looking into aspects related to skill development in our coastal areas and in the maritime sector. It can therefore be seen that in the past few years, there has been a renewed focus on harnessing all aspects of the blue economy. It actually appears that India, a country with a rich and glorious maritime tradition, is once again turning towards the seas and is destined to emerge as a resurgent maritime nation in the 21st century. The Indian Ocean region has emerged as the world's center of gravity in the maritime domain. The ocean itself is the third largest water body spanning an area of 68.5 million square kilometers. 
There are one third of world humanity lives in all the countries which surround on the rim of the Indian Ocean. 66% of the world's oil, 50% of the world's container traffic, 33% of the world's cargo traffic transits over the waters of the Indian Ocean and 100,000 ships pass over the waters every year. Another unique feature which distinguishes the Indian Ocean from the larger bodies, the Atlantic and the Pacific, is that 80% of the oil and trade that emanates in the Indian Ocean region is extra-regional in nature. This implies that if there is any impediment to the free flow of oil or trade, it would have a detrimental impact, not just on the economies of the region, but the global economies as well. Safety, security, and stability in the waters of the Indian Ocean is therefore of, maritime, of paramount importance. And it is the responsibility of the Navy and the Coast Guard to ensure that the oceans remain unpolluted, safe, and secure. Keeping the global commons safe and secure is a collective responsibility. And therefore, networking between navies and global maritime partnerships between maritime nations is emerging as the new order of the current century. During the conference, it will be our endeavor to discuss all aspects of ocean resources and enablers of the blue economy. I'm sure that the vibrant and enriching deliberations will provide some insight on the challenges and opportunities to harness the blue economy, come up with some suggestions for an effective organization to coordinate and monitor the multifarious activities in the maritime domain, and also come up with recommendations to partner together for sustained development of the oceans. Thank you. Jai Hind.